My main interests are weight loss, obesity, and nutrition. Um, but you know, on Instagram, we get into other things too. Right now, the world is going through an unbelievable pandemic that just seems to be getting worse. Thankfully, we've got vaccines coming up. And you know, I do want to talk to all the vaccine issues that are out there. Look, there's a lot of people, I'm not going to change their mind. They're, with anti-vaxxers, there is absolutely no scientific study, nothing I could do to change your mind. And I, I really would say, no matter what it is in life, always be open to changing your mind. I am always open to changing my mind. I think I've changed my mind quite a bit over the years um, on many different topics. To me, it's just a sign of uh, really a lack of intellectual curiosity and really a, uh, an anti-intellectual stance to be like, this is my view. I'm only going to surround myself with people with that view and I'm not going to listen to any other topic because when I talk to anti-vaxxers, it doesn't matter what I tell them. This is a globalist attempt to cull the population, etc., etc. Or this is a pharma thing. You got to understand from a pharma thing, if this vaccine fails, Pfizer is going to die. Uh, maybe not die off, but it will be a huge, huge, huge loss. They are financially extraordinarily invested on in making sure this works. It's not a pharma thing. And this idea that doctors are getting paid to give vaccines, ridiculous. Just, I, we don't get a penny. I don't get a penny from pharma and I don't get a penny from, I can't even, it's illegal for me to even get a pen. I mean, a lot of these people are like, you know, don't get the vaccine, but take this herb. Now the herb, that has no studies on it. And uh, there are people that produce it, that it, the herb isn't even in the production of the stuff that they're giving because it's not, it uh, doesn't have any oversight. Uh, and so all these things are, are just really ridiculous. In fact, I went to get my vaccine on Friday because I'm considered a 1A or frontline worker. And there was a line a mile long with some of the smartest people I know in life waiting lined up to get the vaccine. So I got to go and get it tomorrow because there were too many people getting it. And if doctors were only telling people to get it because they're getting paid to do it, they wouldn't get it themselves, but quite the opposite, they're begging to get it. So while anti-vaxxers are like, I don't want it, the doctors are like, please give it to me. And there's several reasons for that. I mean, for a lot of people, I understand if you can't see this, this virus up front. If you don't see people dying on a ward struggling for breath, or like I had to operate on a guy who tore part of his diaphragm from, from coughing so much, you don't see that. There's no tangibility to this disease. And all you get is what you get on media. And if you've seen Social Dilemma, if you surround yourself with conspiracy theorists, that's all you're going to get. And that's just going to uh, put you in an echo chamber and that's all you're going to hear. Could there be a complication with the vaccine? Yes, there could be a complication with the vaccine. Could there be a complication from taking Tylenol? Yes. Could you die when you get in your car today? Yes, we take risks every day. It's a little bit harder, I understand, for the lay public because every time I sit down with a person, I have to discuss with them an intervention, whether it's medicines or whether it's surgeries or even if it's diets, where I've got to discuss the possible risks. And if I'm discussing the possible risks, I've got to weigh risks and benefits. In this situation, when we're talking about vaccines, we're looking at risks versus benefits. We know that the minor risks, there will be some, there will be some allergic reactions. Some people feel sick after getting the vaccine. I'm sometimes bothered when I don't feel at least a little bit of something after I get the vaccine because I want my immune system to react to it. Uh, this vaccine is interesting. It's one specific protein that it's coding for. So, for instance, there was a SARS um, swine flu vaccine, but it was a, an attenuated virus. So you're getting multiple proteins that you're developing an immune response to, and one of those proteins in some people also triggered an autoimmune response where they got narcolepsy. And that vaccine was taken off the market, but those people got narcolepsy. That is a real side effect of a disease that they got from the vaccine. Now, how many got it? Extremely low amounts, but they stopped the vaccine immediately. Could it be that this one specific spike protein is the same as a human protein and we develop an autoimmune response? And the answer is yes, it's possible. What are the chances of that? Extremely small, because we are talking about one tiny little protein. That's the beauty of this um, vaccine and this mRNA technology, which was not 
created overnight. They've been working on it for many, many years. Beautiful because the, the information never actually enters into the nucleus. It doesn't change our own cellular DNA. It just uses the cell's production company to create one specific protein that we develop an immune system to. So I'm, I'm really excited about the vaccine. I think it is ingenuity at its finest. I see a lot of people say, what about just being naturally healthy? Of course you want to be naturally healthy. There's no question. A few people I know that are healthier than me as far as diets and exercise and, and everything I do to try to be healthy. I still have gotten the flu. The one time I didn't get the flu vaccine, I got sick as hell from it. Now, a lot of times the sickness that comes from these infections can be from a very healthy immune system where your immune system heavily reacts to the infection. And when it heavily reacts to the infection, that's when you get this, what they call cytokine storm, where you get extremely sick from it. So that's a healthy immune system that's causing that, uh, not a sick immune system. That cytokine storm eventually does clear out the bacteria. The whole point of it is to fight the bacteria. So a healthy person is unlikely to die from the infection, but they can get really sick from it. I've known many healthy people that get sick from it, of course. The big risk is that you're going to take this disease and you're going to give it to someone who really can't fight the virus and they're going to get really sick. You always hear this term herd immunity and people don't understand what that is, but what herd immunity is this. The vaccine works about 94 to 95% effectiveness, meaning there's four to 5% of people that will not generate the antibody to this protein. So they get the vaccine, but they are not immune to COVID. They are therefore dependent now on the rest of the population being vaccinated and developing an immune response so that they don't get it so that the bacteria has or virus in the situation has nowhere to go and it can't grow anymore and so if they're hanging out with their family if all their family got vaccinated and all their family is immune then they don't have to worry about the fact that they're not immune and so herd immunity comes when there's a whole bunch of people that are now immune the problem of course is that to get herd immunity without a vaccine would take, the figures are all over the place, but something like 20 to 30 million people dying in order for the, the world to get an adequate herd immunity. That's not a number I want to see, 20 to 30 million people dying. So this vaccine looks great. Um, there will always be risks with everything we do in medicine, with everything we do in life, but they've gone to quite a bit of effort to create what I think is a fairly safe vaccine. What about the potential side effects? If Pfizer does mess up on this, yes, they will be ruined, but people may also be physically harmed. I had COVID in November. It's a terrible thing, but I'm not running. Now, first of all, it's very important that just because you got COVID and it was terrible, but you got over it, you think, hey, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to you, but if you come to our COVID ward, you will see that it could be much worse than what you had. It's really important never to extrapolate your individual experience onto a whole population. There's some people that obviously have a much worse infection uh, and are much sicker. It varies all over the place. There were identical twins where one twin got sick uh, but recovered and the other one uh, did not. And um, so there are going to be differences. Possible side effects. I mean, th there's the common side effects. A little bit of fever, a little bit of chills, pain in the arm, these kind of minor things. We have not seen any major side effects except for two people that got an extreme allergic reaction. There's some people that they, they paused for some numbness and tingling. Uh, look, when you're trying to vaccinate millions of people, there are going to be complaints. Some of them, those complaints are gonna have nothing to do with the vaccine at all. You may have seen that nurse that fainted and everybody was like, oh my God, that nurse fainted. Therefore, that's from the vaccine. That's not from the vaccine. That's called a vasovagal re response. We see that all the time. If I stick a needle in someone, I draw blood from them uh, or I vaccinate them and then I put TV screens on them, they faint. We see people faint all the time. I saw that and didn't think twice. I didn't know that people were gonna be like, oh, this is an example that the vaccine doesn't work. I should have known better. Like I said, there are risks, but I think uh, right now, all that we've seen are just minor local responses and uh, we don't know of any major side effects yet. How has medicine changed since COVID? Are you doing things differently all around you? Um, yeah, oh boy, things have changed like crazy. There's been a lot that's happened. I mean, obviously, one thing that really gets me is that medicine, there's a lot of this like to create a physician-patient relationship. Like I really like to create a deep physician-patient relationship and a lot of that has to do with touch. I love hugging my patients. 
I think it's important to shake hands when you first meet someone. That, that initial touch is a bond. Um, and in medicine, we just don't do it anymore. I walk into my exam room, I give the person the elbow salute. I still examine them, but I do it very gingerly, constantly washing my hands that I did before, but now even more. Um, we have to wear a mask all the time, which is a problem because when I'm, I try to be expressive when I talk. Uh, I think there, there's a lot of facial expressions and, and emotional connection with um, people that, that happens through facial expression that's blocked off. Uh, but we have to wear masks all the time. Our hospital is starting to get packed up with COVID because we're getting that Thanksgiving bump, which is really scary to me. We may have to stop doing elective procedures, including elective surgeries. Now, again, to the conspiracy theorists who think that hospitals are making money off of COVID, there is nothing worse than me not being in the operating room. They make money off me and my colleagues where we do surgeries, patients do well, and they go home quickly. That's where they make money. It's not when they have someone taking up a bed for multiple days and staying sick. That is a huge drain on resources and nobody wants that. The hospital does get a Medicare, uh, a little bit over the Medicare usual reimbursement rate for COVID patients, but the hospital doesn't decide who gets hospitalized. We do as doctors uh, and we're not gonna hospitalize anybody that doesn't need to be hospitalized. That's one of the stupidest of all the conspiracy theories. Other things that have happened, you know, there's, we have constant meetings where we're talking about COVID, where we're looking over the science, really large, hospital-wide meetings with all the doctors where we have specialists that are reviewing the latest vaccines, the re latest research, and we review it all. So there's been a lot of coming together as a, as a hospital community, a lot of the kind of personal touches that are lost. And the worst to me is the COVID unit because in the COVID unit, those poor people, like when I go and see a patient in the COVID unit, I'm in and I'm out so fast. I'm like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Okay, I'm out of here. That's so sad, right? They're, they're, they're in there alone with a disease that's scary. They're struggling to breathe. And it's just, it, it just breaks my heart that, you know, I can't reach out and, you know, give them the usual kind of care that we do as, as medical professionals. Vaccine effective for all the mutations of the virus. We don't know that yet. I'm studying this stuff because it's interesting to me and because I treat people and I want to make sure that they get the right health advice, but I am not a vaccine expert. The spike protein that the vaccine codes for, I understand is in all the mutations that have been seen so far. As you might've heard on the news, there's a new mut mutation of COVID virus that is even more infective than other viruses they believe. I don't know that they've done uh, a gene mapping, uh, RNA mapping on it to see if it codes for the specific spike protein, but I believe that it does from what I've heard from other people. I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see, but so far I think it does. The proof's gonna be in the pudding. Are we, are we immune next year to this is gonna be the real question. Because of COVID, everyone has taken vitamin D. In Israel, the government wants to manufacture and fortify dairy milks and milk substitutes of vitamin D. Could it lead to oversupply and is it dangerous? Yes, it can lead to oversupply. Well, there have been studies showing that there are people that could get too much vitamin D. I check vitamin D pretty regularly in my patients. There's a couple times I've seen too much vitamin D, but these are in patients taking extremely high dose vitamin D. Here's the thing with vitamin D. It has been shown to be important in COVID in correlation studies. Again, with correlation, we don't know, is it the vitamin D or is it something else that the patient's doing that also has vitamin D going with it? Like someone who's like, oh, I'm gonna be really healthy all the time and I take vitamin D to be healthier. I go outside and run all the time. Is that it or is it the vitamin D? We don't know, but from correlation studies, vitamin D does seem, uh, to have an effect on who, get, how, how, not necessarily whether you get it, but how sick you get. However, we don't know for sure. And with some of these other things you hear about, if you've got a normal vitamin D level, you don't need to over supplement. That you don't need to do, over supplement. I really don't like over supplementation. Probably a good idea to get your vitamin levels checked. Because if you've got a normal vitamin D, taking extra vitamin D is not that great idea. I, I mean, there's gonna be some supplemented uh, vitamin D in milks and things like that, but I, in, in, in plant-based milks too, is that really gonna drive your vitamin D level up that much? I don't think so. I don't think you're gonna get poisoned unless you're drinking just gallons of, of plant-based milk uh, or regular milk, but that's not gonna do it. It's more these supplements that are you know 5,000 to 50,000 units. You could go over on vitamin D. Now, vitamin D toxicity really is nothing severe that we've seen so far, but, uh, 
it does concern me in some of the long-term studies, there's not a huge advantage to vitamin D. There's some, some studies that show an advantage for me to, to, to give someone vitamin D or for me to take it myself. It, it, it takes a very low vitamin D level and I look at something called parathyroid hormone. So I wanna know, so vitamin D controls calcium uptake. You can't just look at calcium levels in the bud because the body's really good at keeping calcium levels normal. If your calcium level drops, your body will just go to the bone and start taking out calcium out of the bone to keep the serum calcium elevated. So if I check the serum calcium, it's always normal. But what I want to know is, is it normal because the body's eating its own bone? And that's how I, the way I know that is from something called parathyroid hormone. So I don't just look at vitamin D, I look at the vitamin D's function through parathyroid hormone to see whether or not they're really low. So with all supplements, and my, my dream is to create a supplement I've looked into this a bit because I was like, I don't want to just take a multivitamin. I don't like taking all these things if I don't need them. I want to know what I need and that's what I want to take. And so I would love to have a company and I'm working on it where it's an easy lab to check every single vitamin and then it gives me the exact vitamin that myself needs and then you get a vitamin that's everything you need. That would be an ideal world. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I think vitamin D has a role. I can't believe how many people are vitamin D deficient. Uh, but if you're not vitamin D deficient, you don't need to take vitamin D, if that makes sense.